everyone! Dory here with another episode of Ask Starbase where we answer your STEM questions. Today's question is, how are frogs and toads different? If you've ever spent time outside during warm weather near water sources, chances are you've seen a frog, toad, or even both. They're both amphibians which require water to reproduce. Frogs and toads have similar diets, using their long, sticky tongues to eat smaller animals like insects. Both frogs and toads can be poisonous to the touch, or they could be consumed by a predator and make them sick. As gross as it may sound, both of these animals also shed, then eat, their own skin. To add to the confusion, even the names can mix things up. I certainly expected the Panamanian golden frog to be classified as a frog, not a toad. With all these similarities, how are they different? While researching this question, what I learned reminded me of the relationship between salamanders and newts that we found out way back in episode four. Similarly to salamanders and newts, all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Scientifically speaking, frogs and toads are both members of the taxonomical order Anura, which refers to more than 5,000 different species. From there, toads are separated into the Buffonidae, or true toad family, which includes over 500 species. Let's look at how these groups are different. While frogs and most toads hatch from eggs, then live in water until adulthood, frogs tend to stay much closer to the water than toads do. Toads are frequently found farther away and return to the water only to reproduce. Frogs tend to have smooth, moist skin, which is often colorful. Like all amphibians, frogs are able to absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide through the water on the surface of their skin, in addition to using their nose and lungs. On the other hand, toads have bumpier and drier skin that is usually dull in color. A toad's dry skin is better at holding in the moisture than that of a frog. Since their skin tends to be drier, toads are more likely to breathe through their noses into their lungs rather than through their skin. Every time you see the bottom of their mouths rise, they are taking a breath. Frogs have narrower and streamlined bodies with long legs and webbed feet, which allow frogs to leap incredibly far and swim quickly through water. The body of a toad tends to be compact and squat without webbing on the feet. Toads will often travel by walking or hopping short distances and spend most of their time as adults on land. Aside from skin and body shapes, we can look at the heads of these animals. The frog's eyes tend to bulge out, giving them a 300 degree view of the world around them. I also learned that frogs have two different types of teeth. They have maxillary teeth on the upper edge of their jaws with vomerine teeth on the roof of their mouth. However, that doesn't mean they stop to chew their food. Frogs still swallow it whole, so these teeth are mostly there to hold the prey in place until it is swallowed. Toads, on the other hand, don't have any teeth whatsoever. A toad's eyes are also set further back into their skulls due to the presence of paratoid glands, which are on the back of their heads. Toads will secrete toxins from these glands when they are stressed. The effects of the toxin depends on the species of the toad. Frogs don't have the same structure for these glands, but some are poisonous. Native Americans have even used their poisons on darts to use while hunting. There are even a couple of species of frog, like Greenig's frog and Bruno's cask-headed frog found in Brazil, that are considered venomous. These frogs inject their toxins into predators from the spines on the back of their heads. Another difference would be the appearance of eggs. Many species of frogs lay round clumps of eggs in water, while toad eggs are more commonly found in long lines wrapped around tall grasses or on leaves at the water's edge. While these characteristics are generally able to help separate frogs and toads, there are many species that show a mixture of both families, leaving their classification up for debate. Many organisms that were once part of the Ranidae or true frog family are now classified separately. Scientists refer to species without a specific place as inserte sedis because they aren't exactly sure where they belong.
Thanks for joining me for this episode of Ask Starbase. If you have a STEM question, be sure to email us at ask at starbase-ct.com. Stay well and hope to see you all soon. Bye.